it for a day Got covered with some gooey ooze That changed my DNA Now I try to act normal, keep my cool My other kids play after school I turn into a prehistoric hero I'm in Today on Dino Squad, <laughs> Halloween has more tricks than treats when Velocity's henchmen unleash a giant Spider-saurus. Go Dino! Hey Buzzard, it's Halloween! How come you're not wearing a mask? <laughs> Very funny, Samantha. What's that wacky dance step you're doing? It's just something I made up. I call it the Funky Pterodactyl. Yeah, well, it's for the bird, just like you, Buzzard. <laughs> Sam, knock it off. Buzz is cool. Uh -huh. Huh? It's your weird neighbor from next door. Could you please turn down that music? I can't concentrate on my work. Watch this. You don't know how to have fun doesn't mean we can't. Go back to your haunted house. Sorry. <laughs> that wasn't very nice, Sam. Come on, you have to admit she looks awful creepy. All by herself in that horrible house of hers? Everyone knows she's weird. Tell me about it. Ever since I was a kid, all she does is scowl at me or chase me off her prize crabgrass. Maybe she's not our friendliest neighbor, but that's no reason to judge her because of the way she looks. I've talked to her a few times, and she seems like a normal lady to me. If she's normal to you, that proves she's weird. Huh? This is another one of those towns where those perfect dinosaurs have been spotted. Dr. Velocity wants to try luring them back. Ready to make some dino bait? Absolutely. If Velocity's plan works, when that spider mutates, it should attract one of those perfect dinosaurs. And we'll be ready for it. I turned it way down, Mrs. Krell. As if disturbing me without awful music wasn't bad enough, now your inconsiderate guests are trespassing on my Property. But I've been here the whole time. No one's left the party. I saw them with my own eyes. Two punks dressed like space aliens trampled my flowers. Those dead roses? This is your last warning. The next time, I'll call the police. Mrs. Krell! She is such a fruitcake, accusing us of ruining her ugly flowers. Yeah, the only thing ruined is my party. <laughs> she looks so weird, she's got to be dangerous. We're the ones who should be calling the police. Definitely. Well, do it. Do what? Call the police. Uh, you call them. It's your party she's ruining, unless you don't care that all your friends have a terrible time. Monsters? Here, have some treats. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they're not the only monsters in Kittery. We've got a mutant. Oh dear. Isn't that Fiona's neighborhood? What's up? Got a bogey and it's not far from you. I'm downloading the coordinates to your GPS now. You and Buzz check it out. I'll notify the others. 
Trick or trouble, Fio. That mutant's right next door. We've got to neutralize it before it finds Mrs. Krell. Listen, Buzz and I have to go next door and check something out. Dino trouble? Just behave yourself. And don't let anyone leave the backyard. It's just some trick-or-treaters, but now that that spider's mutated, they're going to be treated to a real trick. Mrs. Krell? You into that lady's first stuff? No, I'm into that Spinosaurus's first stuff. Police run into the mutant before Fiona and Buzz chill it. Not good. Fiona? Buzz? Ah! I thought I told you to stay at the party. I'm sorry. I had to come tell you. I... I called the cops. What? When? After Mrs. Krell ruined my party, I wanted to ruin her night, too. Terry, that's an awful thing to do. But she's always glaring at me out her window. She looks so weird, and weird people are dangerous. I'm weird to some people, but I'm not dangerous. It's in that house. That six kids have gone in, and no one's come out. Maybe the mutant spider got them. This is Raptor 9. We may have a situation here. You better alert Dr. Velocity. There's something big at the end of the hall. <laughs> you look like an orange snow cookie cone. Ew! Who slimed my dew? And what's making my scanner read off the chart? I think that guy's guilty on both counts. Caruso, look out! Chill it, Caruso! Sir, I just picked up another dino signature on my scanner. That second one isn't a mutant. Judging by the readout, it could be a Spinosaurus. We've got to get into that house. Mrs. Krell ruined our party. You should arrest her. She's weird looking. Is that why you called us? Not me. My friend did. Young lady, calling the police is a serious matter. You can't just call because you don't like someone's appearance. We- I'll take over from here, officer. You're Victor Velocity, head of Raptor Dine. What are you doing here? I've brought my team to investigate a possible outbreak in this house. Please, get those people back until we know if it's safe. An outbreak? We're lucky to have your expertise, sir. Thank you. Patrol the property. Make sure no one gets near the house. I'll call you when I'm ready. Okay, everyone keep back! Give us some room, Fiona. We can't get a clear shot. It's not like this dining room was built for a Spinosaurus tea party. Chill and... 
spill! Hi, little guy. You're cute now. That you're not all big and mutiny. Come on, Fio, let's get out of here. That spider mutant bit her. Dump the dino disguise and we'll get you back to the lighthouse so Ms. M can check you out. No, Fiona, wait. You're allergic to spiders, aren't you? In dino mode, she's so big, the spider poison is only enough to make her feel ill. But if she reverts back to normal, her relative body mass will be so low, it could cause a severe allergic reaction. But if she stays dino, how do we get her to the lighthouse? We'll have to sneak her through the trees along the creek. Uh, what's plan B? Why? Because plan A comes complete with two cops, a crowd, and a roll of police tape. Costumes! What about costumes? Mrs. Carell said there were two punks in dark costumes in her front yard. Velocity's henchmen! And where there's his men, there's Velocity. Either there's a dinosaur out trick-or-treating tonight, or Velocity's just gone raptor. We'll never get her out of here before Velocity finds us. We can't just let that creep catch her. The only way we're gonna get her out of here is if we can neutralize the spider venom. Maybe Miss Moynihan can synthesize some anti-venom. I'll get a sample of the mutant venom. Take this back to the lighthouse. Air mail. Roger that, Roger. Fiona, can you make it into the kitchen? We'll keep Velocity away from you until Buzz gets back. Block the doors as best you can. I want to stay with you. Go Dino! He's headed this way! Hurry! <laughs> and filled me in. Let's have that venom sample. It's a mutation of ordinary spider venom. Probably Argiope arantia, a common garden spider. Whipping up some mutant anti-venom shouldn't be too difficult. Where's Terry? Maybe she went back to her sister. If so, Velocity's going to find both of them. Roger and I will hide. You'll be the bait. Isn't that the little guy who wiggles on the hook until the big fanged fish comes along and gobbles him up? We're raptor baiting, not bass fishing. Just do it. Go Dino! <laughs> Let's have some of that breath over here, Caruso. <laughs> Oh. 
<sighs> what are you going to do to me? Save you from that horrible beast. What did you think I was going to do? When I saw that you weren't surprised at seeing a velociraptor, I thought maybe you were a... I... I don't know. I guess I thought you were kind of weird, like everyone says. Everyone? Including you? I've heard the rumors, and I've seen them while you look at me. But you're the one who's always scowling at me. Because you're just as intolerant as the rest of them. Always jumping to conclusions, assuming you know everything. I don't live alone because I want to. I do it to get away from people like you, who won't let me live in peace. No one's let me live in peace. Not since it happened. Since what happened? <gasps> They're beautiful. Does this have something to do with what happened? I was about your age when I saw it. Just like the one downstairs. When I tried to tell people what I saw, they made fun of me. So I stopped talking about dinosaurs and started painting them instead. I've been painting ever since. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Beauty and Baking Secrets of Marie Antoinette. Sounds like Velocity! Let's unleash a can of dino on that dude. Go dino! Go dino! 25 million years back, and 50 million years back, back 65 million years back. Go dino! Ow! Get your fossilized beaver out of my nose! Caruso? Where's Velocity? How should I know? I thought you saw him. We thought he had you. What was that? I really hope I'm wrong, but I say that's the sound of too much weight on too little wood. What was that? Sounds like something landed on the roof. Oh, oh. Thanks, uh, Mrs. Carell. Er, uh, would you believe that that was just a new holographic dino Halloween costume? No. It's cool, Buzz. She's seen a dinosaur before. Awesome. I've got to get this anti-venom to Fiona. I'll go with you. Something's down there. I could smell it. Well, it's nothing. Okay, folks, it's all clear. You can go on back home now. Happy Halloween. Well, this place is starting to look better already. I appreciate your students fixing up my house, Ms. Moynihan. And don't worry, their secret is safe with me. The last thing I need is more ridicule. Thank you, Terry. The flowers look beautiful. You can go home now. You've done the eight hours of work your parents required you to do. If you don't mind, Mrs. Krell, I'd like to keep working. I really do feel bad for being such a lousy neighbor, but I promise I'll never judge a book by its cover again, especially because you turned out to be such a nice book. I mean, lady. That's very kind of you, Terry. Getting to know all of you has helped me realize that staying alone in my house wasn't just keeping people away from me, it was keeping my life away as well. 
Nice try, guys, but no matter how you paint it, it'll always be ugly to me. Hey, Terry, we're going to the mall. Wanna come with? No thanks, Samantha. I'd rather hang out with someone who's really cool. Mrs. Krell. <laughs> <gasps> oh. It's good to have my sweet little sister back. <laughs> <laughs> I can never figure out how to load these things. It's easy. Let me show you. Sure, that's how you write a hypothesis, but how do you write the conclusion? You know what, lab partner? It's probably easier if I just do it. Delta this and Euclid that? It's like a whole nother language. You kidding? Geometry is the bomb. Here, let me. Como se llama? Me llamo es Paco? It's like a whole nother language. No problemo, Senor Caruso. I'll walk you through it. You almost done there, Buzz. You said you were going to help me with that Civil War thing. Mr. Caruso, has it occurred to you that you ask for an awful lot of help that you don't actually need? I resent that. I never ask anybody for anything. Here's the peanut butter and banana sandwich you asked for. All right, fine, you win. There's nothing wrong with asking for help when you actually need it. You just shouldn't be asking all the time. Whatever. I won't ask any of you for any help whatsoever ever again. Think he'll last a day? Boy, are you generous. Five minutes will be pushing it. Don't forget, you're in charge of Rump today. Make sure he doesn't get away this time. I have a hair appointment. Can any of you guys... Hmm? Never mind, I'll handle it. <laughs> Way they're talking, you'd think I was a total leech or something. Great. Now, where does she keep... Rump! Get back here! Rump! Uh, guys, I was wondering if... Who said five minutes before Caruso would be asking for help? I thought for sure he could hold out for an hour. What was I thinking? Aw, oh, never mind. Listen, Buzz, if you're not doing anything... What did I say, guys? Five minutes. Who the man? What? No, I wasn't asking you. No? I was just gonna say enjoy your afternoon off, that's all. Chill! Fine. I'll just go find him myself. Rump! Rump! Here, boy! <coughs> Rump! Oh man! Rump, get back here! Whoa! Ah. We'll go broke paying for all these repairs. Enough is enough. I can fall over the plate and up and down. Need a hand with something, Caruso? I'm good. Got it all under control. Got what under control? Nothing. Nothing's going on, and I have it under control. Did he just say he's good because he has nothing under control? <laughs> This is such a good look for me. Who am I kidding? Every look is a good look for me.
That could have gone better. Beat a stray and you'll never be rid of him. Beat it, Fido! Ah! What are you doing? Get out, you lousy! Ah! Oh! What is that thing? Ah! Finally! Something worth blogging about. This is so not good. Guys, I'm picking up some strange chatter. Maybe we should call Buzz? And ruin his day off? Let's hope we don't need to. Where's Caruso? Hello? Oh, hi, Max. What's up? Roger's getting a lot of chat on the internet. Tell him he needs to get out more. No, he says there's something going on in town. What are you talking about? Whoa. I'm in town. What was that? What was what? It's right there, officer. It's a monster! Caruso, you need our help? It's Caruso. Of course he needs our help. Be careful. It's a monster! Nice monster. Okay, whose dog is this? <laughs> I've never seen this animal before in my life. Hey, you stop that, strange dog I have never seen before. Get back here, Rump! Um, wouldn't Rump make a great name for that dog whom I have never seen before? Get back here with that! Dr. Velasi, I'm picking up some strange reports from Eastern Maine. It's coming from a small town called Kittery Point. Of course I'm not kidding. It was the apocalypse on four legs. Something's going on. There's too much chatter for it to be. How did Rump get free? I thought Caruso was looking after... Oh, should we call him? He's not picking up. Doesn't he want our help? He's clearly embarrassed about asking for so much help before, but now... Now, we'd better get out there. This is where they were last sighted. An hour ago. By now, they could be anywhere. Rump? Sounds a little big for Rump. Caruso? Sounds like he's really freaking out. He's really gonna freak out when I get a hold of him. Oh, oh my. my. What's that doing here? More importantly, how can we calm it down long enough so we can freeze it and free it? Go Dino!
so the sight of a T-Rex is supposed to calm it down? We need to surround it and hurt it. Huh? It's disappearing? No fair. How are we supposed to deal with an invisible dinosaur? It was a hologram. But who would... <laughs> Who else? Velocity! Yes, the bonus is mine. On my mark, bedtime. <laughs> Nap time. Already? Anybody else wishing it had been an actual... Invisible dinosaur? <sighs> I'm going to be rich just as soon as I deliver these monsters to Velasi. These creatures are going to make me rich. How long do we have to listen to this guy? Until we can find a way to bust out of here. We're stuck in dino mode. At least we can talk telepathically. We can plan something without them hearing us. Do we have an estimated time of arrival for Dr. Velocity? RDS leader Alpha, this is Dr. Velocity. Have you acquired the target? Yes, sir. Good work. They had better not escape. For your sake. Don't worry, sir. They aren't going anywhere. <laughs> How do we let ourselves get caught like this? I think it all started with Caruso and Rum. I am getting so sick of chasing you! Huh? Max? Fiona? Roger? Aw oh, man, what did you get yourselves into? I can't handle this alone. There you are! I thought I'd never find you! Say the words, Caruso. Come on. You know you want to. Do we have to do this? Okay, fine. I need your help. I knew it! I knew it! Because Rump got loose and now everybody's been grabbed by Velocity's Oozer Losers. What? <sighs> I cannot believe you waited so long to tell me about this. To be fair, it was only about Rump in the beginning. And if you'd ask for help back then, none of this would be happening. And if you ask for help back then, can we play the blame game after we free the others? Okay, so how do we do it? If I knew that, would I be asking for help? Look out! I'll get him! Whoa! <laughs> nice going, Rump. Okay, on my mark. Go, go Dino! Let them escape! They all gone? Yep, suckers. We're in 
Dino Moon. Why? We travel faster as dinosaurs. What now? Beats me. Follow me. Caruso, are you crazy? I know what I'm doing. You just have to help me make this work. What now, Einstein? I have them, sir. Signed, sealed, and delivered. And these are authentic dinosaurs, Lieutenant? Not mutations? Affirmative, sir. We have a Styracosaurus, a Spinosaurus, a Pteranodon, and a Stegosaurus. Well done, Lieutenant. And... I've captured a purebred Tyrannosaurus Rex. A T-Rex? Well done, Major. M major Why, thank you, sir. So, are we going to stand here all day? Or do I actually get to see them? You there, raise the blast door. What is the meaning of this? I am... I... Mister, why did you go and lock us up like this? Is this some kind of joke, Sergeant? No, sir. I am so calling my lawyer. I'm not seeing a T-Rex in there. Do you see a T-Rex in there? My dad's a lawyer. Let's use him. Sir, I have no idea what. All I see are five kids and a little dog. Did they eat my dinosaurs? Corporal, is he a good lawyer? I'm seeing a check with lots of zeros. I can explain. I mean, I can't explain. But look, I have pictures. I don't want pictures, Private. Where is my T-Rex? I'm sure I can. Turn in your uniform. I'm begging you, sir. Please reconsider. Why don't we discuss this over dinner? I don't know what happened here. How can I possibly apologize? Personal check with a whole lot of zeros? Name your favorite charity and I'll donate $10,000. 25. Now, see here. I'm finally getting a signal. 25,000. Done. Kittery Point Animal Rescue deeply appreciates your generosity. I was so hoping for that personal check. Whole lot of zeros. Well, get them out of there! Nice work. Except for the part where you all let yourselves get caught. Maybe not the best plan. No, but with everyone's help, at least it worked. That it did. And I hope now you see there's no shame in asking for help. I know, I know, but only when I actually need it. Exactly. Of course, you're going to have to fix everything that got damaged. Me? Rump did it! While he was under your care. You guys are gonna help, right? See, I'm not afraid to ask for help when I need it. And this time, I really, really need it. So, who's with me? Guys? Guys? Oh. And so, without further ado, for your educational needs, I've spared no expense and I've applied a modest portion of my incredible genius to give to you Roger Blair's science report on the molecular structure of the important magnesium mineral dolomite. Uh. Huh? Uh. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> 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 now, now, class, that's enough. Roger's inventions have always been wonderful in the past, and I'm sure as soon as he works the kinks out of this one, it'll be just as good. I can't believe they laughed. <sighs> I can't believe it! That last play by Maxwell is a gain of 22 yards. It's first and goal, Kittery Point. I'm out, Kittery. All right, men. Don't let this marshland team off the hook. We need to score. Run the 32A end split. Got it, Maxwell? You got it, coach. We'll take care of it. 
Let's go, team. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. Oh, you're welcome. Roger, we need to talk. I just found out about the whole honey in the helmet prank. Not only was it foolish, but Max could have been seriously hurt. You're lucky the principal decided just to give you detention. If it had been up to me, you would have been suspended. But nobody was hurt. It's no big deal. It wasn't funny. And it almost cost us the game. It's lucky for you we rallied in the fourth quarter and won by a 40-yard field goal. Otherwise, there would have been a lot of angry students on your doorstep. Um, Geek here, remember? I claim the prerogative of not really caring about sports all that much, thank you. No more pranks, Roger. You hear me? <laughs> you pranked Rump? That's just cruel. I call it the anti-directional tennis ball. I made it with a gyroscopic redirectional motivator, which enables the ball to always stay one move ahead of the subject of the prank. But I, I promise, that's the only other prank I was doing. Promise. Ah! It's the end! The end! Look! My beautiful hair! It's so short! It's so short! It has no style! I have no style! That is too sweet. What? I didn't do anything. <laughs> you gave me this invention of yours, assuring me that it would keep my hair perfect. And, and just look what it did. Well, OK, I did give Caruso this. It's a prototype hairstyling device that monitors hair growth on a molecular level and then affects an adjustment via a series of microscopic lasers to keep everything exactly the way it should be. But I mm, guess I haven't worked at all the kinks. <laughs> It's only a haircut. A molecularly monitored haircut. It'll grow back. That is not the point, Roger. Yeah, maybe Caruso liked his hair the way it was. People will see me like this. With no style, they'll think I have no style. No! Oh, it's the end! The end! <laughs> Roger. It hurts a lot to be made to look foolish in front of others. Did you ever think of that? Sorry, but it's obvious that nobody here has a sense of humor. What am I going to do? I know, I know, I'll just go dino. Go dino! Now, when I go out, no one will see my horrible haircut. Uh, somehow, dear, I don't think that will work. Yeah! I'll tell you what. I think we can find you a nice wig to wear until your hair grows back out to the length you like. A wig? That's an awesome idea. Maybe I could get a blonde wig. That would be so cool. Or maybe tiger stripes. That would really make a statement. I was thinking of something a little more along the lines of your original hair. Nothing could be as good as the original, but I wear everything well. I'm sure I'll make it look good. That's the spirit, I think. Oh, maybe I'm not quite finished. Maybe not by a long shot. Oh.
I make this look good. <laughs> no! Don't look at my hair! Oh. <laughs> what? Some people just don't get funny. Load this batch of microbiotic primordial ooze into the helicopter. If seeding the clouds works, then microbes of primordial ooze will rain down on this planet and infect everything from plants to animals to insects. All will become dinosaurs. Nothing will stand against my plan. It will herald the new dawn, the end of man, the rise of the dinosaurs. Perfect. Super Geek strikes again. Look, I know you're still mad at me, but I was hoping we could still be friends. Roger, of course we're still friends. Don't be silly. <laughs> I love you! <gasps> I love you! No way! Really? You love me? Sweet! Uh, guys, no offense, but I really don't love either one of you. I mean, um, no. I love you! See? She loves me! No! Me! Me! She loves me! Guys, wait. I didn't say that. I mean, I heard my voice say that, but, but I didn't say that. At least, I don't think I said I that. love you! Hey, everybody! Fiona loves both Pat and Mike! <laughs> I love you! She loves me! No! She loves me! <laughs> Roger! <laughs> That's it, Roger. We've had enough, and we are not taking any more. The jokes have gone too far, Raj. Are you even listening, Roger? Man, he's not even listening to us. <laughs> you should have seen the look on your faces. Oh, dog, that was too rich. All of you, too rich. Roger, you are just acting so... It's just outrageous. You gotta cool it with the jokes. Yeah. Dude, you made me look like a total nitwit. That's harsh, man. You almost cost me the game, Roger. You almost made me let down the whole team. The whole school down. I work hard at what I do. I don't get you, Roger. Look at my short hair. I can't go out in public like this. I can't go out in public either because those two goons, Pat and Mike, think I'm in love with them. Thanks to you. The whole school is calling me Pat's girlfriend, Mike's girlfriend. It's the most horrible, embarrassing thing. It makes me look like a complete ditz. But it's so funny. Huh? huh? It's Velocity. He's on the move. He's heading for that large storm cloud. Perhaps he's planning on seeding it? But seeding it with what? Velocity does seem to have a one-track mind. 
I'll give you one guess. He's gonna make it rain dinosaurs? Roger, is that cumulonimbus? It is. In English, please. A thunderhead. The cloud. And maybe we can use that to our advantage. Velocity's primordial ooze is temperature sensitive. If we could freeze it before it even left the cloud in the form of rain, then that would probably destroy the ooze or burst it at a cellular level. We'll need a quantity of silver iodide in dry ice, compounds generally used to seed clouds for rain. It causes the lowering of temperature in the clouds to form ice, which then becomes heavier and falls, becoming rain on the way down. The ice is the part we need, but how to deliver the payload? Maybe not one payload, but five separate payloads. Delivered simultaneously by five separate remote-controlled rockets, and geeks shall rule the Earth! Go get them, kids. I got old Vic covered on this end. Hmm. My instruments are picking up some interference. We're all in position, Roger. Good. The timing. The timing has to be just right. If this doesn't go off correctly, then it's going to rain primordial ooze micro, creating a huge mile square area of mutant source. Thousands and thousands, every insect, every plant, every bird, every animal. We get it. Say when. It's going to be close. Okay, now. So far, so good, guys. I think. Roger, they're right on us. It's Velocity's men. They're all over the place. No, get back. Get back. Roger, help. Roger. What's happening? Guys! What am I gonna do? My friends! Victor Velocity's got them! I have to do something. Figure out a way to save them. Primordial ooze has failed. My equipment isn't registering anything. Whatever went wrong is not an accident. Ground team, move in. Possible intruders. Good work on the cloud, but I've got two new signals on the map. It must be Velocity's men. You kids better get out of there. They're in trouble, Ms. Moynihan. All of them. Velocity's men captured them. He's got all four of them. Oh, dude, Roger, you should see the look on your face. You believed us. We weren't really trapped by those oozer losers. We faked it. Just a little prank to really make your day. Like it? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to break up the party, but Balassi's men are closing for real this time. Ironic. I guess that's what we get for crying raptor. There's no way we're getting out of here without them seeing us. Then let's let them see us. Let's go, Dino! Go, Dino! Go, Dino! Split up and run them right. Sir, it's those perfect dinosaurs again. We're giving chase. Lay down some traps. Whatever you do, don't let them get away. I'm working my way down. 
Get those dinosaurs and hold them! <laughs> work. Let's get out of here. Get away. Now search the area and let me know if you find anything. Anything at all. Roger, I wanted to ask you how you felt when your friends played that prank on you like that out in the field. How do you think I felt? I'm asking you. Tell me. Tell them. He doesn't need to tell us. We know exactly how he felt. Because he did it to us. It wasn't funny. We thought it was, just like you thought your pranks were funny. See, Raj? Even though jokes and pranks may be funny, the hurt is there. It's very real and can be devastating. That is often the problem with such pranks. They can be funny to other people, but in truth, they can harm the recipient. But you four also went too far scaring Roger like that. Two wrongs do not make a right. You should have all come to me first before doing something so mean-spirited. <sighs> Truth is, guys, the reason I started up with all the pranks in the first place was that I was mad at you guys when you laughed at me when my presentation failed. It was one thing for those others to laugh, but my friends, it was too much. I just wanted to, to show you all what it felt like. But maybe I got a little carried away. You could have just talked to us. Yeah, I guess. I am now. Look, I'm sorry. Let me make it up to you guys. Caruso, I'll help you grow your hair back faster. I got a special hat for that too. Fiona, I'll make sure Pat and Mike know that you're not their girlfriend. Anything you guys want, you got it. Well, at least Rump already got what he wanted. That took me weeks to make. Oh, what the heck. Good boy, Rump. It's all yours, buddy. Fiona, the Tyranno cycle is amazing. I added stealth mode, off-road capability, and an autopilot that'll follow you anywhere. Plus, now the cycle uses a hydrogen fuel cell, so no emissions, which makes it eco-friendly. Sure, upgrade Max's motorcycle. Max gets everything. Max gets autopilot, Max gets stealth mode, he even gets better fuel efficiency, while the rest of us contribute to global warming. So not fair. <laughs> Wait, Buzz, you don't understand. Something bugging him? It's Buzz. I suspect something is always bugging him. Yeah, but lately it's been that bully, Mr. Nasty McFinn, who's really been giving Buzz a hard time. That McFinn has the worst hair. But what do you want from such an oaf? Whoa! You think the bike is sweet? Check out my magnetic counterbalance solar powered mini copter. I'm getting it ready for the bring your favorite Marvel of Science to Physics class assignment. We're almost finished, 
Dr. Velazzi, sir. Excellent. With this experiment, we will be able to track the flight pattern of these birds. They hold great potential for spreading the perfected primordial ooze. Once, of course, it is perfected, it won't be long now before I am ready to achieve my dream of altering the Earth into a new paradise. I shall usher in a new reign of dinosaurs. No more will these silly monkeys crowd the Earth with their pathetic existence. I will wipe them all away and bring back a true species worthy of this planet. Dinosaurs shall rule the Earth once again! Uh, sorry, didn't see you there. What you got in the box? Cookies from your mommy? <laughs> Back off, McFinn. What's your problem? My problem? You're my problem, freak boy. Tell him, McFinn. Tell him why. My problem is that you don't look right. In fact, you look stupid. You look so stupid that it, it makes me mad. You hear me? You look stupid. So you better stop being stupid, and you better stop looking stupid, or else! You are the coolest, McFinn. You sure showed Freak Boy. Yeah, Freak Boy. Freak. <sighs> you okay, Winifred? Aw, the latch on your cage got damaged, Winifred. It's, it's that McFinn. What a big loser. What a total ignorant Nimrod. I could just go dino on that guy. He would be so terrified. <sighs> Some boa constrictors can grow up to 20 feet, and many live anywhere from 20 to 30 years. That's a lot more biology class, but the boy loves his snakes. Oh, now don't you worry. I won't let her get you. Ms. Moynihan, I hate to interrupt, but I need you to sign these forms. I'll be right back, class. Look, everybody! Buzz finally got a girlfriend! <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you guys say? Maybe that snake is Buzz's date for the prom. Man, wouldn't that be awful? I mean, I feel sorry for the snake. <laughs> hey, knock it off. That's enough. It's not cool, McFinn. I don't need no advice from you. All right, class. I'll see the rest of your scientific marvels tomorrow. No, I'm going to go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ms. Moynihan, can I leave Winifred here? Until tomorrow. Because I just have to get out of here. She's been fed and everything this week. She'll be fine. Don't you worry. Go on now. This experiment is going extremely well. The mutated flock is making excellent progress. They've almost reached... Hmm, Portsmouth and Kittery Point. It's going to be a beautiful day. How's everything going, Buzz? Honestly. Yeah. You okay, Buzz? Sure, I'm okay. Really. Now leave me alone. Did I just hear someone ask Buzz if he was okay? Buzz okay? How could you tell? <laughs> 
Not today, Roger. Knock it off. Buzz, how could you really be okay? We heard McFinn giving you a hard time. McFinn. That guy is such a goon. I could just go dino all over his head and he wouldn't even know what hit him. Ah, the age-old dilemma between the choices of conscience. Go dino on his head. No, don't. Violence will only make more violence. Kick his backside from here up to Bangor and back down to Boston. Be strong in the face of the bully. Stand up tall. Don't let him push you around without violence. Go dino! Yes. Hey, I was using those. Yes, Roger, you certainly were. And some of your ideas are pretty good. But maybe the presentation isn't helping a whole lot? I'm just so amazed, Buzz, that you haven't gone dino on McFinn. That takes a lot of self-control. I'm proud of you. Look, Buzz, if you don't want to be picked on or bullied, be more like me. Nobody picks on me because I'm so beautiful. Be more perfect, and you won't get picked on. It's that simple. Give me a break, Caruso. That's the worst advice I've ever heard. Buzz is perfect just the way he is. He shouldn't have to be anything other than what he is. Tell that to McFinn, the ignorant Nimrod. Well, what can we do? There's got to be something you can do to change the situation. We gotta look at some of the options, Buzz. Try to be assertive, but not aggressive through body language. Stand up straight, shoulders up and back. Now you're sporting a physical stance that shows confidence. Excellent. Next, make eye contact with the bully. Really go eye to eye. Um, okay, not that much. It's more a figure of speech. <laughs> anger is a big problem. It's so easy to get angry when bullied. You have to control your anger because otherwise you keep the anger going. <laughs> anger makes for more anger and you feed what they call the cycle of violence. You never get anywhere that way. Plus, it's plenty hard on the furniture. You know, we could always try talking to McFinn. You tried talking to him in science class, and you saw how well that went. Yeah, I was tempted to go dino on him myself. Even more importantly, we should talk to Ms. Moynihan or the school principal. Yeah, that is vital. What about your parents, Buzz? You could talk to them. Yeah, that's true. They would help. You could always try to avoid McFinn. He looks for me. He follows me. I never did anything to him. I don't get it. He always seems to find me whenever I'm alone. It's kind of silly to be afraid, because I face crazed and crazy mutant sores all the time. But, but with McFinn... With McFinn, you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to deal with him in human form. And that also makes it harder. But don't worry, we'll stick by you, no matter what. Huh? Huh? Yeah. <sighs> The satellite feed is picking up mutant sores, and they're coming in fast. It's some type of dino seagull. A new genus, Loris Morinosaurus. Lauren, Marion, what? We just call them gullosauruses? Close enough. They're headed right for Kittery Point. It's going to be a hard enough time capturing them and deusing them, much less having to do it in front of the entire town. We need a plan, and fast. Giant mutated seagulls. I have an idea, but I'll need to borrow Max's tricked out Tyrannocycle. No, you don't. Sweet. Awesome. Beautiful. I tried to tell you earlier, I upgraded everyone's motorcycle. I was just using Max's Tyrannocycle to work out the details. And Buzz, I even upgraded the sound system in your helmet. Too wicked sweet. There they are! We need to intercept them! That's where all this thread comes in. 
I borrowed it from Ms. Moynihan. Good thing she takes bread so much. Those coal sources look pretty big and pretty hungry. Fine. When you go dino, just put your bike on autopilot. It'll follow you. If I know gold, and I think I do, they can't resist food. <laughs> Come get it! That's strange. Something's wrong. They're changing direction. Something's giving me interference on the satellite imaging. Oh, a little interference, Vic. You poor thing. <laughs> Ready when you guys are. Then let it rip. We've got incoming. It's Velocity. Let's hit it, Dino Squad. Time to head for home. Five is my guess. The same number of perfect dinosaurs I saw back in Manchester, New Hampshire. Hmm. That was some serious mutant sore action. We came, we froze, we deused. And our upgraded bikes are totally styling, Fiona. Nice job. Everybody did a nice job. It's kind of ironic. We just saved the town of Kittery Point from giant mutant seagulls, and nobody is going to know about it. Especially that bully McFinn. We know, and that's what's important. Guys, it, it really meant a lot to me that I could talk to you all about this whole McFinn thing. Maybe I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about it yet, but I do know that no matter what, I'm going to be myself. I'm not going to let any thick-headed bully tell me who I am or who I should be. Especially if you're beautiful. You don't need anyone to tell you that. 
You can just look in the mirror. That's nice, Caruso. Nice. Whoa, watch the hair, will ya? I just fixed it for tomorrow's science class. So you see, this hair is a scientific marvel, an eighth wonder of the world, a glory for all to behold. It's so perfect, it's perfect perfect. Look on its beauty and despair. Um, Mr. Caruso, would you join me in the hall a moment? Perhaps I haven't properly explained to you what the term science actually means. Yo, Buzz, your hair is a scientific marvel in a study of ugly and stupid looking. I don't know what you mean, McFinn. I like my hair just the way it is. It's a study of perfection. Or as Caruso would say, it's so perfect that it's perfect perfect. And it is. Yeah, Buzz! You go, Buzz! It is we perfect! Go, huh? You're gonna take that from him? No way! He talked back to you, McFinn! Don't take that from him! Well, I... I... I say your haircut is stupid! Stupid! Ah! Ah! Get it off me! Oh, please! Oh, please! Oh, please! Oh, please! McFinn is a big chicken? A big coward? No way! Way! Relax, McFinn. She won't hurt you. Will you, Winifred? No. She's too sweet to hurt anybody. Well, unless it's something she wants to eat. But, 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 snakes are so slimy. They're not slimy. Not at all. They're smooth. Feel their skin. Go on. She's not going to hurt you. Hey, you're right! Look, everybody! I'm touching a snake! This is so cool! Yeah, I know. Isn't it? You should never judge anything by how it looks. Snakes, other animals, people. That's weak, McFinn. Yeah, I, uh... Thanks for taking the snake off of me. You know, when I was freaking out about the snake and you were right there, it kind of made me think, well... How you must feel when I'm always giving you such a hard time. It, it's just that, well, you look so weird, you know? It's kind of scary. Well, McFinn, you look plenty weird to me, but it's no biggie. Yeah, I guess. Huh. Never thought of it quite like that. Want to hold her? Um, let's not get carried away. Thanks, Winifred. I owe you one. Buzz, I wanted you to know that I've talked with Aaron McFinn and his parents. They're all coming in for counseling. Some of the others told me about the bullying, and counseling is vital for kids and for their parents. I want your parents to come in too. I've already talked to them so that we can all get together, sit down, and discuss what's happened and how to deal with it. Thanks, Miss Moynihan. I'd like that. I'd like that very much. Have fun in the mountains, Fiona. You gone all week? Yep. See you when I get back. Thanks, honey. You packed yet? What is the dealio with my sister? Hanging out with Rooster Top, Basmati. What is she thinking? All set for this weekend? Depends. Is this the year you share the secret recipe with us? You know I can't. I promised Aunt Mara I'd never tell a soul. What's the big deal? It's just cookies. And Hamlet was just a play, I suppose. And Beethoven's Fifth was just a song? Every year we have to go up into the cabin. No cable, no internet, no movie theaters. And we come home smelling like peanut butter cookies. Young lady, what have we told you about reading at the table? Hmm. Why can't I stay home with my friends? Fiona, is it asking too much to make time for your family? Row, row your boat gently down the stream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row. Row, row your boat gently row, down the stream. Row, row boat, merrily, merrily, the stream. merrily, merrily, life merrily, is but merrily, a dream. Merrily, merrily, life is but a dream. Merrily, merrily.
Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Ugh, I'm 17. How can you make me do this? Your father's family has been baking and selling their famous cookies to support the choir every year for more than a century now. Someday you'll be doing this with your children too. Ugh, don't look at me. They were your parents first. Enough with the hat. I'll stir. I'll bake. I'll wrap. I'll even label. But I draw the line at wearing silly hats. You don't have to wear it if you don't want to. I'll be right back, okay? Can't talk right now, Fee. Velocity's latest experiment has really stirred up a hornet's nest this time. What am I missing? Pterodactyls? Giant dragonflies? No, I mean a real live hornet's nest. And just a few miles away from you. Where are you? I can be there in like 10 minutes. We got it, kiddo. Catch you later. Missing out on the fun. Tell me about it. We're doing something important here. How is making cookies important? Well, cookies bring people together. Like who? Like this family, for one thing. You know, when families like ours first came into this country, we weren't welcome at all. In history class, didn't they teach you about the phrase, no Irish need apply? Large groups of immigrants have never been greeted with open arms. And this was our solution? Making cookies. Demonstrating we wanted to be part of things here. The way we wish you were more interested in being part of this family. an earthquake? This is no earthquake. <gasps> what is that thing? A mole, I think. Are you kidding? It's big as a buffalo. Don't move. It doesn't seem interested in us. Fiona, where are you going? <laughs> Time to go. Why? It's gone now. You think it's not coming back? It was more scared of us than we were of it. Speak for yourself. Do I smell like giant mole? I think I smell like giant mole now. I know you're in a big hurry to get home to your friends, but nothing is going to spoil this vacation. Max, Fiona, are you guys still in the area? Based on Fiona's description, we're dealing with a mutant subspecies of the genus BEM. Which would be? Big enormous mole. I'm willing to bet it came from the same pool of ooze that created those hornets. At least Velocity and his men have already left the area. That's one complication we won't have to deal with. Speaking of complications, let me remind you that Fiona's family doesn't know she can turn into a dinosaur. It is imperative that we keep them from finding out until Fiona decides she's ready to tell them. Grump! He's drooling in my lap! And these pants are dry clean only. You made it! What is that smell? Peanut butter? Combined with cookie dough? Don't even think about it. They're for the bake sale. I've got money. How much? Forget it, buzzard breath. Is that any way to talk to a guest? Buzzard breath. Thank you so much. That was delicious. Uh. I may never eat again. Can I interest anyone in a lovely waffle? Just making sure nobody leaves the table hungry. 
We'll search the woods for any sign of that mole. Remember, don't transform where Fiona's family might see you. How could you invite your friends here without asking us? There are only hope for dealing with that giant mole thingy. That thingy is gone now. You couldn't go two days without them? Is it that hard to be around us? That's not it at all. You're not going to make them leave, are you? They're guests now, and they're welcome to nose around the forest or whatever they want to do. I won't be gone long. You won't be gone at all. You're not using this as an excuse to duck out on us. Is that rump? Dino rump! Oh no! What's that noise? That's just rump. He's so rambunctious. So, you want to stir dough? Fiona, pay attention to what you're doing. How clumsy of me. I've lost my earring in the batter. The light's better over here. <laughs> oh no, we burned a whole batch! Oh, man. The smell is killing me. Huh? This is very bad. Oh, quickly, let's get them away from the cabin. Distract them. Give me your aprons. Get inside quick. Here, Molly, 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 Molly. <laughs> Time to get your family out of here. What about you? It's fine, Dad. We have equipment for this. What are you talking about? If we go, you're leaving with us. We've got it covered, Fiona. M may we have a minute? There's no way to deal with this without some of us going dino. He's right, Fiona. You want to do that in front of your family? You kidding? They'd freak. Honey, help us pack up the rest of the cookies? Don't worry. We'll be fine. Fine, schmine. I'm sick of being left out of the fun. Here's one. Man, here's another one. The only way to deal with them is to gather them into one place. Easier said than done. <laughs> See, no mall can keep up with good old fashioned Detroit. Yep, we threw a belt. Carry spare. As a matter of fact, no. Hmm. This'll do. Hey, that's Italian. Grazie, Mamma Mia. Dad, we both know I'm better at this kind of driving. But take the wheel. Fasten your seat belts. It's gonna be a bumpy night. Whee!
No sign of him anywhere. Hmm. I'm guessing Fiona's at the wheel and that... Yep, they're getting mold. Is this how they taught you to drive at Bertha Bogstad's School of Racing? Absolutely! Except the race course didn't have mutant moles! Terry, wait. Stay in the car. Ah! Terry! Are you okay? It smells like wet mold. They were never after us. They wanted Auntie Mori's amazing, unique, award-winning peanut butter cookies. Dad, you're right. Ding dong Dell, Terry's in the well. When they're done eating, they're going to go back down that hole. <laughs> Terry! Mom, Dad, you might not want to watch this. Go Dino! the one with the fan? No, you said pterodactyl. I said fan. Wait, you knew? Come on, Fiona. You go to Boston, dinosaurs show up in Boston. You go to New Hampshire, dinosaurs show up in New Hampshire. You go to Sheboygan, dinosaurs show up in... She gets it, dear. Why do kids always think their parents are so completely out of touch? You think we were never your age? Were you a dinosaur when you were my age? Just because our issues weren't the same doesn't mean we don't understand. Hello? Still in the well? Grab on! Great. Now I smell like a really, really wet... <laughs> Is everybody all right? Better than all right. My dad figured out what the moles are after. We can cure them if we can lure them into one place. I have an idea, but I'm going to need everybody's help. We need to get back to the cabin, fast. Go Dino! <laughs> It's okay, we know. Go, Dino! Go, Dino! 65 million years back, go, Dino! Go, Dino! Go, Dino! 25 million years back, go, Dino! Go, Dino! Go Dino! Go Dino! 65 million years back! Go Dino! Don't even think about dropping me.
Easy on the butter. Like they're dieting? If something's worth making, it's worth making right. Are they great or what? And for one small price, they can be yours. Mmm, that smell. Can't I have just one? They took the bait! Places, everybody! Honey, our cookies bring families together. You're equating us with rodents now? Don't be silly. Moles aren't rodents. Let's do some chilling and spilling. It's incredible. Now you see why my students are so special to me. I've never had a cookie taste so good. Okay, now may I? Now. Mm. You knew the whole time? Why didn't you say anything? We were waiting until you were ready to tell us. We love you and support you no matter what you turn into. Not every parent would be so understanding. Well, maybe they should be. Nothing's as important to us as our Fiona. Hello, sitting right here. You should be extremely proud to have such a daughter. We've always known she was special. I get straight A's. Anybody notice? A little Miss Perfect turns into a giant lizard and it's all, ooh, Fiona's all prehistoric. Isn't she wonderful? Why am I saying this to you? Everything packed? What are we missing? <laughs> Thanks for taking our daughter under your wing. You've been really great for her. I'm happy to do it. Let's have them over again, without the moles. Would it hurt you to spend a little time with us? Who's up for making cookies? I am, but only if they're... Auntie Mora's Amazing, Unique, Award-Winning Peanut Butter Cookies! This... I know I promised Grandpa I'd get that mural painted at the Mrs. retirement Victoria home. Vandersham, I know, but it's just so hard Vandersham to get everybody Horton organized. Announced the three finalists for the prestigious oh, Vandersham wait, Dad, I have to call you back. Scholarship. The three finalists are a young lady named Rebecca Flatterly for her painting of a horse. A young man named Jacob Seats for his painting of a sunset. And finally... A young man by the name of Neil Basmati for his painting of a praying mantis. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Buzz. You did well. Ooh, the competition was so intense. A lot of people with a lot of talent. But this scholarship, it could mean going to the university of my dreams. It's possible. I could win. The three finalists must now attend a banquet where <gasps> they will be judged by their behavior. The finalists must display all the merits of good etiquette, including how to dine, how to dance, how to converse politely, and how to behave in high society at a black tie function. I firmly believe that an artist should be a well-rounded individual. Being an artist does not preclude one from having to be polite or civil. I may be old-fashioned in my thinking, but it is my money and my scholarship, and I think I should do what I hope is best for young people. Have a nice day. Black tie function? There's no way I can win. No way whatsoever. I'm sunk. Finished. I'm through. 
All that stuff's totally easy. All it takes is a little practice. Oh, really, Caruso? What do you know about haute dining? I'll have you know that I am well versed in proper etiquette because when you look this good, you have to be ready for anything. If you're so prepared, why don't you help Buzz? Teach him. I don't know. It was hard work for me, and I'm me, and Buzz is, well, he's Buzz. Enough said. Can't be done. Maybe a little incentive would work. Say, how about we won't show anyone these photos from your recent bad hair day in return for your teaching Buzz proper etiquette? You wouldn't. You can do it, Caruso. You can remake Buzz into a suave social butterfly like yourself. Or the world sees these pictures. You drive a hard bargain, but I'll do it. Buzz, there are certain rules you're going to have to learn if you're going to mingle in polite company. But I'm eating. Yes, I can see that. In fact, the whole world can see that, and it's very scary. General rule, fingers do not belong in ears or noses. Forks or utensils should never pause mid-air or be used as pointers. And never chew with your mouth open. Never talk on the cell phone at the table or blow your nose. In fact, if you have to do anything other than eat and be polite and converse, excuse yourself from the table and go elsewhere. Which brings us to poise and grace. Walk with back straight, chin up slightly, confident without being arrogant. Smile. That's it, smile. Let's try that one again. Let's not. I'm not cut out for any of this. It'll never work. But we've just started. You can't give up. You have to persevere in this if you want to be successful. Keep trying. You'll get it, Buzz. Experiment 0-54. In an attempt to further develop a viable primordial ooze, I've grown a substance that should maintain its own unique DNA signature. All that remains is a field test. Hello, Earth to Buzz. You cannot sit at the table in dinosaur form. Why not? At least as a dinosaur, it'd be obvious why I'm always knocking over the water glass or breaking the plate. I'd have an excuse. Well, I think it's pretty obvious you can't go to the big scholarship dinner as a dinosaur. I think it's pretty obvious. I can't go at all. <laughs> We gotta save those deer! Let's get prehistoric! Go Dino! We've got 
got incoming. Velocity is on his way. Those perfect dinosaurs and their human accomplices have ruined another promising experiment. Spread out! Find them! We'll never outrun them. Lucky I cooked up a few surprises over the weekend. Take a kettle of biodegradable vegetable oil, add a dollop of dry ice for steam, and voila! A perfect recipe for defeat. Or in this case, the tires. Come and pick us up! No! I've asked you all to take part in a mock dinner party as a way to maybe help Buzz see etiquette in action. So, please, all of you be on your best behavior. Ms. M, you'll be playing the role of Mrs. Vandersham? Of course. Shall we begin? Soup spoon, salad fork, elbows off the table, polite conversation, smile, back straight, Napkin neatly on lap. Okay, Basmati, you can do this. You can take a sip of water. Oops. Huh? What? Please excuse me. Ah! That could have been worse. Yeah, at least the table didn't catch on fire. That's it! I quit! I'm not doing this anymore! I won't do it. I can't do it. But you can't give up. If you just persevere, you'll get the hang of it. Let me ask you, how important is this art scholarship? Huge. It could mean the difference between going to the school of my dreams or not going at all. Then you need to stick to it. Never give up, never give in. That's true perseverance. You have such a great start if you just keep practicing, keep working at it. Hmm. Perseverance, resolve, and determination. I can do this. Sure, look at Caruso. Please do. Everyone else does. Caruso's perseverance is really admirable. Even if it's dedicated to the whole looks department. Yeah, if only he applied that much work to his studies. He'd get straight A's. You ought to try it, Caruso. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just show you guys that I can do anything I set my mind to. Well, if you're gonna go that far, I'm not gonna let you be the only one getting it done around here. I'm going to organize painting that mural at my grandpa's retirement center. Yes! Hey, Mr. Stinky the Stink Bug. I'm glad you're going with me. That way, I won't be going in alone. Of course you're not going in alone. We'll be right there with you. Roger and Caruso will be monitoring you from here, while Max and I will be part of the wait staff. Good luck, Buzz. You can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Ah, Mr. Buzmati. Welcome. I am so very pleased to meet you. Very nice bow, young man. Very nice handshake. I can do this. I really can. Allow me to introduce one of the judges for the finalist competition. A great humanitarian and benefactor to so many good causes. Dr. Victor Velocic. I so cannot do this. Very nice to meet you, sir. Well, if you'll excuse me, I probably should find my table. Oh, I believe you're sitting with me. Great! I mean, that's great. I'm looking forward to a wonderful evening. Fee, Max, you seeing this? Victor Velasi is one of the judges, and Buzz has to sit at the same table with them. We see him. 
Be ready for anything. I hope Buzz can hang in there. So, I hear you have an interest in insects. Yes, sir. I'm a scientist. Do you see yourself as a possible entomologist someday? Actually, sir, I do. Maybe even set up an insect appreciation program to teach everyone about bugs. I really feel people don't appreciate insects as much as they should. Buzz is doing great! I'm giving him high marks for etiquette. He's got grace, he's got poise. Diversity in nature is so important. Every species is vital. Hmm, well, yes. But some species are more vital than others. Unfortunately, random acts of nature can sometimes elevate a lesser species above a greater one. They want us to clean this? Tonight? Let's do this room later after we finish up with that artsy thing. Look at those moves! He's got it! Buzz is tearing up the place! He's doing perfectly! Wait a minute! I'm picking up a mutant sword inside the hotel! Could it be the scans are registering Velocity? No, he's still in human mode. It's something else, something big, in the large reception room a few doors over. Perhaps I'll call it an evening. Telephone call for you, sir. What? Telephone call? Oh, telephone call, yes. If you'll excuse me, thank you, sir, for the wonderful dinner conversation. <laughs> Well, I guess it's pretty easy to see the mutant sore in the room. I've been oozed. Is that better? More original, at least. Come on, guys. Let's herd this thing into the corner and deuse it. work, guys. What is all that noise coming from next door? It's really quite disconcerting. I believe, ma'am, there was a wedding reception. But it should be all quiet now. Where are they? Why, Dr. Velocity, I thought you'd left after you entered your judgment. Did you still want dessert? Dessert? No, I don't want any dessert. <gasps> what is that awful smell? I... it's... <sighs> Good evening. Again, I wanted to thank you for the wonderful conversation. Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but that man, well, I know he's very generous when it comes to charities, but there is something about him I don't like. Mrs. Vandersham, in all honesty, I couldn't agree more. Sadly, there's a lot I don't like about him. But you were so polite to him. Well. 
It felt wrong to be rude to him at the table, because that would only make the other people sitting there feel bad or uncomfortable. You have very good instincts, young man. What is that you have there? Um, nothing. Mr. Basmati, I demand that you show me what is in your hand. It's a stink bug. His name is Mr. Stinky. That's... that's... You know, young man, you were the favorite of all the judges, and I thought pretty highly of you myself until this moment. <sighs> but now, you are definitely my favorite as well. That is a beautiful little bug. I brought a little friend as well. Her name is Winifred. I have a pet boa constrictor named Winifred. Oh, really? My pet boa constrictor is named Stanley. Wicked sweet. I mean, <clears throat> that is very interesting, Mrs. Vandersham. Oh, please, call me Victoria. You're very genuine, Mr. Basmati. Please, ma'am. My friends call me Buzz. Yes, Buzz. Very genuine. You have wonderful instincts. That's what I look for in the winner of my art scholarship. Etiquette is something that can be memorized. With a lot of work. Yes, that's true. But good manners come from the heart. This whole dinner is designed to see how genuine someone can be in these circumstances. And you were wonderful across the board. I am very pleased to announce that the winner of this year's art scholarship is Mr. Neil Buzz Basmati. Isn't it beautiful? Once I got everyone organized and kept them organized, it really came together. And I painted those bugs, which is great, seeing as it was bugs that got me that art scholarship along with the help of my friends. No, Buzz, you did it. It was all your hard work, practice, and perseverance that got you that scholarship. And I want you all to know that with the studying I did, I got straight A's on my midterms. So you see, perseverance does pay off. Just look at me, beautiful, talented, and smart. <laughs> <laughs> Those dinosaurs disappeared so quickly. They had to have had help from their human accomplices, who must have been at that dinner. And perhaps those humans are on this list. If they are, then I will find them. I will persevere, and I will find them. I'm in, I'm in, in the Dino Squad. Don't have to be a Dino Squad hero to help save the Earth. Be cool. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Change my DNA. Now I try to act normal, keep my cool. While other kids play after school, I turn into a prehistoric hero. Oh.